so here's an older server I have, Dell Power Edge 2950. Don't really use it much these days, mainly just because it chugs power. Um, yeah, and here's what I'm going to try today. Putting this GPU, 16x full-size slot here, into these guys, which have a half-lane slot. It should work, I'm just curious how all it's going to work out. So, first thing is pulling it out. Comes out really easy, servers are designed to be easily maintained. Then you can pop this board out just like that. Um, there you go. Putting out the board. Here's the thing. Essentially, it would be going into this slot. I'm gonna have to cut away this little chunk of plastic. And then I have to hope that the foam on this supports GPUs. I'm just hoping now. Um, if something does go wrong, it could do... Could kill that slot. Could theoretically kill the motherboard, but I truly doubt it. I doubt it could kill the motherboard. I mean, the worst that could really happen at this point is just making this an unusable slot, which, since this server is off 90% of the time, I don't really care if I screw up. And if I do, I get a mess with this GPU in it. So let's see how it goes. Oh, also, just for fun, these motherboards, these, you know how you can easily pop out parts like that and things just come up like this? You can take out the whole motherboard without tools. These things are awesome to work maintenance and stuff on. Result than expected. I had to cut about a little bit here because I screwed up some pins and then I got kind of worried. And then I kind of just realized if you looked up here, it's PCIe X4 slot. So it shouldn't matter because you see there's actually no traces running to the second half. So that's perfectly fine. What I probably should do is tape it up just in case it shorts one of the pins. This guy was taped up earlier just to test to see if I could run a GPU at 1x speeds. Uh, you probably can't see it. Eh, it's kind of faint. You see that little bit of tape on there? So, yeah. If I'm right, this GPU should fit just in here. I can't do this on camera. Okay. So, if I'm right, then this GPU should fit. Oh, that side does not want to go in. Nah, there it goes. Kind of fits. Right? If I'm right, that should fit and work reasonably well. Can't say how well. Let's test it with this GPU first, because I literally don't care about this one at all. Let's see just how it does. So just turned it on, plugged into the GPU, ain't getting any output. That's annoying. So, next thing. Let's unscrew the VGA converter. Plug it into the iGPU. I don't think there's a BIOS setting that would affect this. But well, let's just see. And it's working perfectly. Um, I forget what the BIOS key on here is. I think it's F2. There comes a mouse. Oops. F1, F2. There we go, we got in. Um, I don't think there's anything video related in here. Uh, nope. Integrated devices? Set uh, Mac. Yeah, there wouldn't be anything in here. Q, integrated array. Yeah, it sees it. Definitely sees it. Okay. So it's detecting it. Let's let it boot in... It has a drive with Linux on it right now. Let's let it boot and just see if Linux detects it. Yeah. So, let's see. let's see if it detects it. So, it's definitely detected. Um, I think I have another drive with an NVIDIA driver on it, when I'm gonna try in there now, so let's do a little bit of dorking around and we'll try to get that to work. Here it is all set up. Um, yeah, one more thing. We're gonna pop out the front drive here so it can only boot off of the second SATA drive we added. We're gonna have to go on that keyboard and add it. Keyboard pegging here. Yeah, let's see what she does when I turn it on. To have fan spinning. This server's gonna get loud. It's the power supply fan that runs max when you can't 
put the cover on, we're gonna enter setup. And then I'm gonna boot it off of that USB on that two and a half inch hard drive and see what she does. I have a Linux Mint now installed on the hard drive for the server. So um, this, this monitor here is connected to that GPU. This one's here connected to the iGPU on the system. We're letting it boot. I I think it has the NVIDIA drivers installed already. And we see it's booting on this screen, showing us the normal boot configuration of Linux Mint. And if I'm guessing right, it's gonna re pop right up on here. Nope, it's saying Ubuntu Mate right here. It's not Linux Mint. Um, I chose Ubuntu Mate for whatever reason. I don't remember why. It just worked. If I had an ISO of it lying around. I think it's 14.04, so it's fairly old at this point. And then you see this screen turns on. This one turns on once the actual graphics driver stack gets loaded. So now we're in here, and we're going to be loading. So I'm going to get into the login, going to log in and look at it, and then I'll show you some stuff about it. Yes, if you're wondering, the GPU is working right now. This is running off of the dedicated Quadro GPU. I think it'll work with the 7300 GT as well, but I don't feel like trying it. No reason to. If it works on this one, it should work with any GPU. All you have to do is cut that thing. I put the tape in there just for good measure. You don't have to do that, but it might keep my GPU safe because I'm more worried about the GPU than the server. So I do have a copy of Blender on here. And if I were to go up the directory, go to Blender, open Blender. This does require a GPU here. The Blender executable, which takes a while. It's complaining my software is out of date. Uh, networking does work by default here. And this is the standard Blender benchmark. You can download this. You just hit render and compare it to whatever your system is. If we see here, this does say GPU compute on how it's doing it. So if I click render now, we can see what the time is and I'll go compare it to my other systems, which have had this GPU. So you can see if the PCI Express bottleneck is causing a problem. So now we can see all the system stats. So you can see the CPU is running at 2.33 to 2.0, depending on the core. Um, HTOP showing fairly low usage with one core being hit plainly that. CPU is running at around 50 Celsius. It's not being hit really at all. GPU is running at max usage. So here we go. It's almost done rendering. And I do have a, um, I have a, um, Excel spreadsheet of all the scores that I've gotten on other systems. So we're going to compare it and see how this guy does compared to other ones. So just finished, and I'm going to open up that spreadsheet now. About 4 minutes and 9 seconds on here. I'm looking at other systems I have on my um, spreadsheet that seems to be pretty good. I got 358 on a system on another system, and I got a 405 on another system with a slightly different speed. So I could be the bus and CPU that's acting slow, but it's within a few percent. So it's not going to make a huge difference. You can look at the spreadsheet, I'll have it linked below of all my results from different systems. Um, I'm going to run CPU just for kicks and you can see how well she does. Um, power consumption wise, let's go plug that in and I can show you power consumption on here as well. So this system is right now idling, pulling 240 watts from the wall. It's running pretty much nothing, it's not rendering anything. So if I fire up a GPU render right now, you're going to see my usage is going to pop up a lot. Once that finishes and actually starts rendering, here, now it is, see it. I'm up to 344, so that's about another 100 watts from the GPU between idle. This GPU idle is pulling a lot of power. I think the system without that GPU pulls about 200, so the GPU is pulling another 40. So it's pulling quite a bit of power, and if, I know you can't feel this, but back behind here, this thing is hot air coming out. And then if I throw a CPU workload on top of this, because I'm um, here. Here's a little track, I don't know if you guys know this. Um, comes pre-installed on most distros. Uh, let's make a control B C and then you can do F C eight. This will stress all of my CPU cores. So if I go to the next page you can see H top shows them all being hit. So max load, we can see I'll show you the temperatures and let it run for a minute. You can see it popping up really quickly to sixty instead of like I think fifty was the older temperature. And now we're up to 475 watts. So if I'm right, that's only another 40 some watts, was it? Oh boy, I don't remember how much it was added. 240, 340, yeah, so it's another 120 watts. So these CPUs pull a lot of power. These are older 
core, these are basically co dual core 2 quads in the system. And then if I um, quit the GPU process, it takes forever because if you run a GPU process, it takes all your frame rendering times. Well, you can see now there's no GPU usage load and the CPU use, the, it drops down to 420 watts. So there you go. Um, let's give this a shot and look at one more thing. We're going to boot it up in, well, let's put a game on here. I'm going to install Steam and chuck a game on it, see how it does. And then we're going to boot it up in the Windows and see how Windows does on here, just for fun. So here it is running just fine. I have TF2 running. It's about 40 FPS-ish. It's running just fine. Um, that's probably it when it comes to graphics benchmarks. The GPU is getting toasty in there. I'm going to try putting Windows on it now because Team Fortress 2 runs just fine on Linux. going to compare it to Windows too. I'm just curious how it'll compare. I seem to be getting around 40-ish, sometimes 45-ish FPS in this position here. So there you go in TF2. We're getting about 60 FPS in Windows. Runs a bit better. Uh, we're getting about 70 now. 70 to 80. So we're getting a better frame rate than Linux. 50 versus about 80. So there you go. Let's also just run Cinebench for fun. Uh, you can't all F4 out of this game. I'm going to go run Cinebench and just see how she does. And then that's going to be pretty much it. So for everyone who has been wondering, yes, you can run a discrete graphics card on a, seven, on a 2950. So here you go, Windows. The, I haven't configured the screens right, but you can see you actually have dual monitor support, unlike Linux, due to how the graphics stack is completely different, and in my opinion, better. I have definitely tried many a times to make the whole multi-monitor thing work. Can never get it to work right. The Cinebench score on here, if I'm right, is around 350-ish. So not horrible, but not perfect. It's, it's, I think, like almost a 10-year-old system now, so that's still actually fairly impressive. But thanks for watching my quick little video on this. It does work perfectly, like I said before. It does always boot on this, um, on the other graphics card, so you kind of want a second monitor, or you have to make sure you have graphics drivers or switch monitors whenever you do it. I'll show you the score once it's done. And there's a completed score of 412 cinematic marks.